If you want to make or learn how to make games in C++, watch this. All the resources you need to get started. Let's see what he has to say. If you have always wanted to make games in C++, but doesn't know how or where to find the resources, this video is for you. I will give you some general tips from my experience and then I will tell you what are the best free resources that you can find online in order to start learning all the skills that you need right now. Now, okay, best free with, tips. Let's see. The first step that you should geeksforgeeks.org. Okay. Take is of course learn how to use the language. However, you don't have to go there. That's actually what I would say too. And that's how I started too. You know where you begin learning to make games in C++? Well, step one is, <laughs> how about you do a basic language tutorial, exactly. Very deep into it. Let me explain. While I am making games, I usually use the standard library containers like vectors and other structures, but rarely write templates myself, and I never use things like polymorphism or inheritance. By all means, you can use them if you want, but learn... This, by the way, the Chrono library takes about three seconds to compile. We found that out the other day. Now, maybe you can put it in a pre-compiled header and then you don't have that compile time. It's about three seconds. Advanced C++ should then be your top priority. Yeah, what the fuck? So he basically says like this line of code is, <laughs> yeah, you need to learn that. This if brings you to the second that. step, which is learn how to manage a big code base. This is very important because games have many systems and putting them all together can be a challenge. I don't think this point, managing a big code base, this is something you learn by writing a big code base. And you can only write a big code base if you write, let's say, a game or a big application. So, for example, what I do to navigate my big code base, and I have something similar, uh, you see here 12,000. And if I go all the way to the bottom, we have 20,000 lines of code. Well, that's not 30,000, it's close enough. And so, how do I navigate this? I have what I call sections. So, for example, hero list. Draw hero list. Boom. This entire section. If I were to enable or disable that in the game, we can actually do that. It would not display me this right here. So, for example, if I were to do an if false here, it's gone now. You see that? Basically, how I navigate my big code base is by using named local scopes or named scopes. Yeah, and you, you learn to navigate a huge code base by writing a huge code base. How does he say how to do that? Let's see. Next to the second step, which is learn how to manage a big code base. Yeah, how? This is very important because games have many systems and putting them all together can be a challenge. You have probably heard the advice to split your problems into smaller problems. And it is good advice, but people rarely tell you that merging the solutions back is usually something difficult. Mm -hmm. In order to learn how to handle a big code base, you have to go to step three. And this is actually writing a big program. Okay, so like, yeah, his point is exactly my point. You can only learn a big or manage a big code base if you write a big program, yeah. Learn some advice about design patterns and clean code, but trust me, if you just read about how to structure your code, but never yeah. actually write a complicated system, That's true. you won't make progress. Exactly. So, what so these are the 24-7 the tutorial watchers that think they learn something, which is why every day when I, you know, watch one of these videos, I try to take something away from it and uh, maybe actually put it into, let's say, practice by trying to program something similar. And oftentimes that leads to something new being developed in my game. Project should start on. Well, why not make a game? You probably don't know how to. No, this is actually actionable advice while not going into too much detail on what exactly that means because everyone's code base when, let's say, they write a game is different. When my code base grew, I had to figure out how to improve that code base and make it better. And I came to the conclusion that, well, how about I just make these local scopes? That's how I solved my code base issue. And then I used folding and unfolding to basically turn these into functions and not have that many functions. And um, some other person or some other programmer will find a different solution. That, But I'll show you how to start and then you will learn the rest by doing it. Keep in mind that it is your first big project and you are not making it to sell it on Steam, but yeah. rather to learn how to do that. This leads us to the last step and that is to keep yourself motivated by looking at other people that learned to make games in C++. Mm -hmm. One video that motivated me was this guy that made Minecraft in one way. Oh wow, coding Minecraft in one week, C++, OpenGL, programming C, something like that. Hello, in this video I attempt to create a simple voxel game slash Minecraft clone in a single week. It doesn't have the best performance or the most features, but of course there's only mu so much you can achieve in a single week. Hope you enjoy. I wanted to do that myself, so I started with Terraria. 
and eventually moved on to making Minecraft myself. It will take a long time. Yeah, that's what I tried to do too. We're still working on it. It's the J Minecraft clone. Mm -hmm. And this is why it is important to remind yourself of the final goal that you pursue. Now, let's talk about... I mean, you could start with a clone. I started with a Pong clone, but then I would make a really basic, simple game that maybe you can even sell on itch.io. Or maybe not sell, but put it out on itch.io. ...about what you actually need to learn. The first thing I mentioned is knowing the basis of C++. And if you are unsure how to do that, I recommend you this playlist from the channel. But probably any other... Um, maybe, but it's a bit long. I think you can get... All of the information a little bit faster in other videos, but that one's good too, of course. The tutorial that you can find online will work because you don't need to go into advanced stuff for this stuff. Yeah, I need, yeah, that's it, essentially, that's what I say too uh, as well every time. Like any of these tutorials will work for you just so you know the basics. You just need to know what's possible so you can use that as a base to decide what to use. Next, you need a way to start displaying stuff to the screen in order to make your game. For this, you need two things, a window and a way to draw to it. You can either use the library that will do that for you, or learn to do that yourself with something like Windows API and OpenGL. For this step, I recommend that you use the library because it will take significantly less time to see some problems. Yeah, that's actually a really good recommendation. Take it from someone that took about, well, let's say two years of time to learn Vulkan. OpenGL, the Windows API, some Linux API. All of these things took a long time to learn and I'm still not done. And the biggest worrying factor that I have at the moment with my game is that maybe there are some Windows systems or Linux systems that are not compatible with my game and how I implemented, let's say, loading OpenGL into my game. I recently switched from Vulkan to OpenGL to have a little bit of an easier time writing a renderer, but that is constantly on the back of my head and I don't know how my game will perform in public when there is a bunch of different, you know, I use Arch, by the way, Linux users, that will test out my game and then realize they can't even start it because it doesn't run, because I did something wrong in the code. And it, take, it just takes a long time. And if you use something like SFML or Raylib or SDL2, they have run into these problems. They get you started faster, 100%. And you can focus on the game. Uh, but it always depends on what you want to do. If you want to learn, then go with Windows API. Learn X Audio 2 if you want to, or Direct Sound, Direct X. Just knock yourself out. Because ultimately that knowledge can be very, very valuable in the future to you. And some people that are using a library will not have that knowledge over uh, the knowledge that you have. And it will maybe make using those libraries for you easier. Essentially that's what uh, happened to me. I used Raylib in one of my projects lately, which was I think the Diablo 4 clone. <laughs> or Diablo 1 clone that we did in, I think it was Odin. Was it Odin? I think we used it Odin. And then we used the Raylib in there. And it was actually easy to use, learn, learning how to use Raylib in, in there after I already knew how OpenGL worked. That was really nice. And so you can also go the other route. So if you want to go down that rabbit hole, do it. But realize that this takes time. Uh, maybe it's better to just use Raylip. It's your decision. It takes a lot of work to display something to the screen. Yes. And if you try to do that yourself, there are some chances that you will get demotivated quickly. Yep. I would recommend oh, you. Oh, you can get demotivated so fast because it doesn't mean that you, after writing all of that code, you're done because you can run into a lot of issues. Libraries. SFML and Raylib, because they are easy to use and they handle window opening, too as well. drawing and even sound so you can play music in your game without configuring another mm -hmm. library. SFML has many tutorials online. The reason why SFML, SDL and Raylib are so good is because they give you exactly these four components. They give you the window creation and opening, they give you the uh, rendering and they give you sound. And I forgot one. Oh, they give you input too. And it's, mm, as far as I know, all of them have cross-platform support, which is big. It's well, awesome. Raylib is more advanced, and if you learn it, you might also use it for your future projects. Find some videos online that walk you through how to start making your game, so you understand how it works. I would recommend you this video series because it teaches SFML 2.4 for beginners. This guy made some really cool tutorials, it looks like. Very nice. Some important basics. 
yeah, that's how I started too. I made a C++ tutorial, or I followed a C++ tutorial on how to make a game in C++. The only unfortunate thing that I uh, had to deal with back at the back then was that I never found a really good tutorial on how to make your own engine from scratch, whether that be using SDL2 or Raylib or something else. No one taught that. And so that's why I made my own tutorials. After that, you'll have enough knowledge to start making your own game. I said to start it, not finish it. You will gain that knowledge while making it by searching on the internet whenever you get stuck. If you want to learn some more things, however, I also recommend... I wouldn't do that, actually. I would just dive in and try to fix every single issue myself before I go on the internet as a last resort to figure out what to do. Because it's much faster and more learning intensive. You get more value out of your learning experience if you figure out solutions yourself. And you're also working on solving problems by not relying on any outside resources like for example you always ask this one guy that helped you back with your code base and now you value his opinion very highly and so you always go to him to ask him for questions you're like bothering him but at the end of the day you're not learning much yourself because you're relying on something else i think the best way to learn is to just sit yourself down and try not to find a solution online but to find it yourself do this channel JVDX9, sorry for mispronunciation. He, he has some, some really good tutorials as well. Yeah, I've seen some of them, yeah. It has some very well explained tutorials. Before I wrap up, I want to give you a bonus resource, and it is the Handmade Hero series. I think this. Handmade Hero, there we go. Yeah, very good. That's how I started too. That's when I started to actually make some meaningful progress. Because like these people, Jonathan Blow and uh, and Molly Rocket, well, Handmade Hero, Casey, while they have a lot of negative opinions and they, you know, they come off as very negative. Like I watched this guy like five times before I started warming up to him. You know, every time I watched him, I was like, this guy's too negative. So I needed to watch this like five or six times. But once I understood what the actual message was, yes. Because the message is actually just do the stuff yourself. You will be able to, to make mistakes, learn from your mistakes and grow fast. The best learning resource for game development, but it is time consuming and rather oh, yeah. hard. It teaches you how to do all the things yourself. So if you have enough time and are interested in that sort of stuff, I can recommend you enough watching some of his videos. I would recommend watching the first like 20 of his videos. Now, this was my perspective on how to start doing game development in C++. But different people have different ways of learning. So if you have already completed this journey yourself, feel free to write about it in the comments and maybe you will help a young future game developer start his own journey. See you next time. See you next time, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's good stuff. I'm already subscribed. Uh, I've been following this guy's journey from the very beginning. It's cool to see that he actually made a game. Wasn't that successful? But, like, yeah, making a successful game in this genre is really difficult. Pre precision platformer, difficult puzzle platformer. Yeah, we have, you know, gone over this with Winterget or other games. It's really difficult.